Social media and computer-based activities are popular among people with impaired social skills. That includes people with a form of autism called Asperger's syndrome. The disorder itself was removed from DSM-5 and incorporated into autism spectrum disorder, but patients still call themselves Aspies. Many of them are very high functioning. Some big achievers have been diagnosed in life or retrospectively. This is not the realm of Dustin Hoffman's Rain Man. In some cases, these are folks you might think are just a little too intense or kind of awkward, but not disabled. From the Aspies side, a common complaint is overstimulation. Too much going on in their senses to attend to just one thing. Computers and TV are controllable and not as overwhelming as real-world encounters can be, so many Aspies are drawn to computers as a pastime. Masaryk and Wenstrup found ASD children spent significantly more time engaged in TV or computers than did their neurotypical siblings, including intensive use of video games and internet-based massive multi-user games that take place in virtual worlds or on virtual recreations of historic real-world battlefields. Sometimes that attraction grows into a vocation. In 2011, Shell and Melnichuk reported that 67% of the attendees at a computer hacking conference scored highly enough on an autism quotient scale to suggest strong predispositions toward autism. Computer-based social media is a boon for Aspies because it lets them reach out, express themselves, and make contact with others they might never meet in traditional social contexts. Aspies also use social media to experiment with alternative persona. For individuals with ASD, the ability to take on different personas and role play gives them the opportunity to practice social skills and work through situations with which they may otherwise have difficulty in real life. That's because, as most Aspies recognize and some expressly admit, Aspies can seem unusual. Uh... I want to talk about relationships, uh, Asperger's and relationships, because, how should I put it, people with Asperger's are mm, weird. Aspies often have narrow or unusual interests, like train timetables or baseball cards. On Facebook or other social media, it's easy to connect with others who have the same interests, even though they are rare in the physical world. These groups help Aspies feel connected to others and provide additional opportunities for social contact. Common interests are important because they give Aspies something to talk about. One of their biggest problems is their inability to initiate conversation or make small talk. Researchers call this a fault in theory of mind, or the ability to place oneself in another's shoes and see the world as they do. Imagine being the only child in your grade who doesn't have any friends. Imagine not being able to understand jokes, figures of speech, or sarcasm. But these deficits don't matter as much on social media like Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest as they do in the real world. One study found ASD adults express less stress in online communications because they don't need to decode nonverbal cues, sustain eye contact, or respond as quickly or spontaneously as in face-to-face -face conversation. They can take the time to think and analyze, and they don't have to focus on self-presentation skills like when to talk, where to look, and what to do with their hands or expressions and predictable, rote statements like happy birthday dear friend are natural online, while they may seem stiff and awkward in person. Social media is said to be an equalizer among people, but social media sites dedicated to specific groups and subjects provide further social leveling, and it can be especially important for people in rural areas where Aspies may be few or far away. Aspie-focused sites like Wrong Planet offer information and discussions about the disorder, which can act as a virtual support group for Aspies and their loved ones. They also provide a safe environment for Aspies to interact, even without shared interests like baseball cards. But there's a difference between bulletin boards and Facebook walls and tools like online chatting. 
They're about posting messages rather than talking in real time. That makes a difference to some Aspies. I really love, as far as social media platforms go, the only one that I actually use that I like the most is Instagram. And that's because I'm extremely visual. And even now, I still struggle with it. Like, I don't update my Facebook very often, and I don't use Twitter, and I don't... Even YouTube is, is difficult for me. In Facebook and Wrong Planet dialogues, you write something, then later someone else posts a response, and you might answer it still later. These are mostly used for keeping in touch with online friends, exchanging information, and finding out about activities in the physical world. Instant messaging, on the other hand, is immediate and geared more toward establishing and developing relationships. This can result in closer relationships and more intimate communications, which can be harder for Aspies to sustain, but many of them still want this form of contact. And when it's not available, they may express those desires in asynchronous social media like YouTube, as if hoping to attract support in response. I can't stay upright. I can't look people in the eye. I can't, um, I can't stop myself from saying things the way I immediately think them. And I end up saying things the wrong way and insulting people. And the last day at dinner, I, I wore shades all through the dinner. Partially because I was tired and, and it was bright, but also so I wouldn't have to have as direct eye contact with people. So how can Aspies make greater use of social media? One intriguing possibility is the use of social media as a venue for teaching theory of mind techniques and enhancing Aspie's social skills. In one study, a patient using an online chat tool learned conversational turn-taking skills, interacted with people he would not otherwise engage in conversation, and was growing more comfortable with face-to-face -face communications with people he met online. You can consider this a form of online cognitive behavior therapy, or CBT. Gauss proposes that CBT helps Aspies by teaching them to monitor themselves and act within conventional social bounds. CBT has been shown effective in helping Asperger's children reduce anxiety, depression, and anger. Computer-based training delivered online without direct involvement by a human therapist has also demonstrated positive results in anxiety and depressive disorders. Likewise, CBT for theory of mind skills has been shown to help Aspie children understand nonverbal cues. This one uses gameplay and video and audio modeling to teach the meaning of expressions, inflections, and tones of voice. Again, this technique takes advantage of Aspie's fondness for screen time to teach social skills. The finding that CBT can help Aspies learn social skills opens many possibilities. One is therapy at a distance. A study of music-based therapy for Asperger's delivered through Skype shows benefits surpassing similar therapies conducted face-to-face. -face. The Aspie in this study was highly engaged in the Skype session, offered more eye contact, was more creative in his lyric compositions, and was more confident about disagreeing with the instructor. This makes sense because the method combines Aspie's comfort with computers, mediated communications, and special interests to create a productive therapeutic situation. It also turns out that Asperger's children interact well with therapists appearing by video conferencing tools through devices mounted on robotic carriers. They demonstrate increased levels of engagement, greater attention to the robot therapist, and positive social behaviors like social play and spontaneous initiation of activities. Combine that with developments in artificial intelligence, and therapy by social media gains even greater potential. Computer scientist Alan Turing once said that a computer can be considered intelligent if a typical user can't distinguish its responses from a human at least half the time. Many computers have passed the Turing test by conducting online chats with humans who didn't realize they were interacting with computers. In one experiment, 78% of the people conversing with an artificial intelligence chat partner thought it was a human. 
It's easy to imagine therapeutic robots chatting with Aspies using the tools that Aspies already prefer, with consistent styles of interaction that maximize communication and learning. This could be a standalone therapy or part of a broader program. Academic researchers have also shown that virtual reality techniques can be useful in teaching Aspie specific skills like where to sit on a bus or how to deal with inappropriate requests from strangers. Also, because Asperger's patients have demonstrated interest in screen-based games, including virtual worlds, VR seems like a rich opportunity for therapy. Virtual worlds designed just for Aspies have found success in the past. The Second Life Online world contains sessions designed for interaction among Aspies, including Brigadoon and the Autistic Liberation Front, and even offered simulated job interviews to help Aspies get the skills for landing employment. Perhaps virtual reality combined with technologies such as facial recognition and computerized gesture and expression reading could be applied to helping Aspies develop theory of mind-based social skills, including understanding others, communicating in real time, and appropriate self-presentation. Future research should explore a process informed by behaviorism systematic desensitization techniques in which a phobia is conditioned away by associating relaxation with stimuli distantly related to a fear-provoking object or situation, then progressing through closer stimuli until the original object can be approached without fear. It may turn out that Aspies can learn basic interaction skills in text-based chat, then progress through non-threatening face-to-face communications with cartoon-like VR avatars to improve real-time understanding of nonverbal cues, synchronous conversation, and eye contact. Ultimately, exposure to lifelike characters and virtual environments could help translate these skills to face-to-face contacts in the physical world. If this model were to prove effective, it would represent a powerful application of social media's ability to extend contact to isolated others, including those with impaired theory of mind and social skills, and address the societal need economically and more broadly than is possible using offline and face-to-face techniques.